You know, it's always fascinating to read about the frontier days of Tennessee. Quite another thing, though, to see them. Of course, photography wasn't around until about the mid-1800s, but thanks to a Gallatin artist, you can enjoy some very impressive, very vivid images. Here's a profile of Gallatin frontier artist David Wright. History is my love, and history is my subject that I paint. David Wright is a master at transferring his love of history to canvas. For the past half century, this Gallatin artist has brought America's past back to life. Born in Rosine, Kentucky, David attributes his award-winning career to his bluegrass roots. My parents told all of us, I can remember this very clearly, you can do anything you want to do. And that affected, I guess, all three of my two brothers and myself and our decisions, you know, to go into the arts. And um, they are always encouraging us. And growing up in Kentucky, of course, Kentucky is just full of frontier history. So from the youngest days of our hunting and our fishing and our running the Kentucky hills, has always been, somewhere in the background, the historical influence of that has affected us, you know. All of that, you know, has a great bearing, I guess, on what shaped our lives later on and mine too. We're so rich in frontier history, the settlements and the long hunters. So when I was eventually just kept drawn back into that period, so I uh, started focusing on the American frontier, both Eastern and Western fur trade in the uh, frontier, American Eastern frontier and the uh, Civil War, war between the states as we like to call it. Those are my two primary subjects that I focus on today. Thanks to Bedford Forrest is one of my favorite military soldiers. He made a statement that if uh, you're gonna fight a war, fight to win. And I've always remembered that, especially with the war that I served in, the results of how it came out. So he's always been a favorite of mine, a, a military genius without any military schooling, um, very drawn to his principles, and he was a very principled man. He's got labeled with a lot of bad press, but when you study the whole life in Bedford Forest, you see that there's a lot more depth to the man than what's portrayed by various groups today. If you've looked at my work for long, you see I paint heroes. I believe in heroes. I think we need heroes. So my work is more heroic, I think, in that sense, whether it be a, a frontiersman of the East, an Indian, a mountain man of the far west during the fur trade period or the war between the states, whatever the period is, if you look, you'll see the heroism in my art. I like to portray that. When you get to studying the frontier period, uh, especially what we refer to as the eastern frontier period, there's lots of heroes in there, and a lot of them are unsung. You hear a boon, and uh, some others, but as you study deeply, you'll find that there were numbers and numbers of people who came here, settled here, long hunted here, Casper Masker, James Roberts, and Isaac Bledsoe. The list could go on and on. To me, they're all heroes. Even the Indians, to me, are still, they're the heroes too. They were fighting for their land. They had a purpose too. Uh, it's history. There's nothing we can do to change history. It's as it is. We don't need to rewrite it. We just need to accept it, investigate it, and study it. I try to paint realistically and I try to paint accurately. I feel that a historical painter's um, job or responsibility is to portray history as accurately as we can within our limitations, and I try to do that. As one of America's premier artists, David's paintings can be found in many private collections and preeminent museums throughout the country. However, two paintings in particular have brought him the most recognition. I was commissioned to do a painting, Gateway to the West, Daniel Boone leading the settlers through the Cumberland Gap, 1775, depicts that event. I worked with the National Park uh, Service going on, out there on the site, uh, traveling the Wilderness Road, doing a lot of investigative research on it, and arrived at this painting 
of the party, as you've seen, a story of monumental proportions. Daniel Boone, Cumberland Gap, the part that Cumberland Gap played in the settlement of our country. The other painting was uh, one I did recently called The Captives, uh, two years ago. That painting uh, was in the Idle Jordan Museum show, and it sold there and won two awards there. It tells a horrific story, depicts two captives uh, who are being canoed to a village to await their fate. And there again, that's another painting that leaves the ultimate result to the viewer is what's going to happen to them. And so that painting to me is, is I think, one of my best paintings probably for what I set out to accomplish, one of my favorites. When you do a painting, from my standpoint as an artist, especially a historical standpoint, we have a story usually to tell. And so you build that story to the viewer's mind in there that he may relate to it and to execute it in a realistic, in my case, manner that pulls the viewer in, makes the viewer feel like he's part of the story, then I've accomplished what I set out to do. I've been fortunate, I really say blessed, I think blessed is more than fortunate, to have lived the life I've lived, um, to be able to paint and make a living painting. Probably if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't do it any differently. Might have put in a little more time uh, painting, but still, as I'm saying, it, uh, I'd still become an artist. Enjoyed that all the time, still will. Got a lot of years left to do, and I think I still got my best work ahead of me too.